I ain't fucking. Alright. <clears throat> you know what? Just uh, just to jump right into this. Well, I got I got a whole. Th- you got a what? I got a whole thing about this, but we're we're gonna talk about. Look at these socks. Oh yeah, these fucking are my good. uh, my Miami uh, no feet for free on Maine, bro. That's a very internet. Is it? Line. Yeah. Doesn't matter. God, so much socks. Oh, mine are just. <clears throat> Oh, and as usual, the music's playing. Yeah, we like, just love that. It's like our theme music. Thomas Crown. All right. A debonair and adventurous bank executive believes he pulled off the perfect heist. However, he has to match his. Damn it. Son of a bitch! Fuck! Fucking Thomas! I can't pull off a bank heist. I can't pull off a fucking intro. This I, whole thing's, this whole shit house is going up in ruined. flames. Everything's ruined. I let the, <laughs> the ghost of Steve McQueen down. I let myself down. I, really I let, let my father down. down. My dad. Um, my dad, Thomas Crown. Um, <clears throat> Thomas Crown. Thomas Crown Royal. <laughs> That'd be awesome if you found out your father was Thomas Crown. Oh, it'd be sick. How, do, how was you that conceived? What? Well, my mother was investigating my father. There's also a 95% chance that a lot of people's dads are Thomas Crown. That's good. True. If you think Thomas Crown be Thomas smashing. Crown be smashing. That's uh thank you for the edit for, <laughs> yeah, the for edit. YouTube. Thank you. Uh, we're not gonna get immediately demonetized. <clears throat> but speaking of that, a debonair adventurous bank executive believes he pulled off the perfect heist. However, he has to match wits with a sexy insurance investigator who'll do anything to get her man. Anything. Anything. Well, does she? Or does he? I don't even know what the question was anymore. What? That means we watch the Thomas Crown Affair and the Thomas Crown Affair on this episode of Retro vs. Remake. Retro vs. Remake in the windows of your mind. In the windows of your mind. In the windmills of your mind. In the the basement. You can just do anything. Like, you could Uh, say that. And I go up the stairs and down to the stairs and I'm walking up the stairs and the stairs. I check cleaning. I I check the grocery list. But I needed pears. Uh, Audience, if you don't know what we're talking about, in the 1968 um, film, The Thomas Crown Affair. Uh, it won an Oscar. Yes, for best original song. Best original song. <laughs> the Windows of Your Mind. The guy that wrote that, uh, uh, Michael Legret. Legret, yeah. He's. Uh, I don't know. This is literally. Well, actually, he, he did the music. The uh, lyrics are by Alan and Marilyn Bergman. Alan. There, he was someone. The guy. He was like the son of someone. That you're like, what? I don't know, Alan Bergman. Yeah, that's. Uh... I don't know. We could edit around this, Ed. but maybe, maybe. Um, oh God! JB, no, JB. Does it. JB is doing a heist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this cat is uh, the king of heist. Ah uh, man, you're gonna be a legend, kid. He does this every day. He's ruined my blinds. He, yeah. He's been watching Thomas Crown Affair. That's all. Those are the windows of his mind. In the windows of my my of my house. <laughs> JB keeps ruining. Oh boy. Uh, no, so the but that song is when that scene in Animal House when yeah. the guy is playing guitar like and John Belushi comes in the toga just smashes the guitar. <laughs> that's what I feel like I want to do to this song when it's playing. It just it's so stupid. Yes. And you, it wants to be like it's it's very college deep, you know. Like it's like isn't that so deep? Like because I'm talking about the windows of my mind, and it's like no, it's not. It's not. It's just it's like when you read anyone's shitty poetry, 
it's, and it just stinks. They're like, oh, I stand on the precipice of blah, blah, blah. You're like, shut up. It, it's a, uh, there's a, so this is a weird ass aside. Um, Tucker Carlson. The, yes. Uh, conservative uh, talk show host or whatever. Um, did a whole thing about like Barack Obama being like a homosexual or something like that. And they pulled up like some of his old like college poetry and was like, no, everyone just sounds gay. Everyone <laughs> stinks. <laughs> yeah, everyone's like. It's, and uh, by definition, college poetry is homosexual. That's yeah, no, no, like, is. like that is pure, sim like art, um, uh, we could do this thesis at another point in time, but like art is inherently queer. Well, we're going to talk about art on this podcast. That's we might a good as point. well. Like, uh, I would say... Exposing feelings and... Well, think about, like, um, all the artists that we know. Like, um, when you look at someone like uh, Frank Sinatra, for instance. Yes. On his face, crooning. Like, if you just saw a dude crooning, you'd be like, stop that. Yes. Stop but, then, <laughs> but then you see Frank Sinatra, you're like, oh, I get it. Yeah, while he's drinking a bottle of Jack and smoking a pack of, <laughs> of unfiltered cigarettes while hiring people to kill your Correct. family. It's you're just, like, okay, it's well, a he Steve could It's McQueen theorem, right? Yes. Like, uh... Like, we've talked about this before when it comes to acting. Like, a lot of the tropes about acting is like, oh, like, um, um, there's not a lot of straight guys <laughs> in acting. Correct. Like, <laughs> that's a lesson to you kids at home. If you ever want, to, never let your friends put you down. If you want to act, by all means. If Absolutely. you're straight, do you know how much you clean up? There are, you're surrounded by women all no of the time, and no one, you're for no like way. hours and hours and hours, and then you're in dressing rooms together, and yeah. you form a camaraderie, and then guess what, a little uh, in again, out again, fit again, and then... Yeah. Here's like my theory about that. Um, this has nothing to do with the movies. <laughs> yeah, this is... <laughs> this is just us being pals. Yes. Um, my theory about that is most people are so untalented that they don't want you to branch out because like your prospects are going to be better because you're the singer or the actor or the person who puts themselves out there. Yeah. And that is hard to do versus it's the guy who's just like, oh, is Jerry Rice better at catching a football than Randy Moss? <laughs> like that's... <laughs> that's... Which is a direct quote. <laughs> that um, is... Um, that's a direct quote from someone that we know. <clears throat> Round um, like a circle in a spiral, like a wheel within a wheel, never ending or beginning on an ever spinning real, like a snowball down a mountain, or a carnival balloon, like a carousel that's turning around, an Oscar, Dan. An Oscar. You would, you a would not... A wheel in a wheel. You don't pass kindergarten with shit like that. What does the wheel have to do with the other wheel? I don't know. It, what are you talking about? Now, oh, Alan. To be fair, um, I don't want to get into, I don't want to tell you how I feel about these movies. You know what? Let's, yes. uh, we got to do it. Hi, welcome to Retro vs. Remake. <laughs> this is a podcast where we watch uh, the original version of a movie, and then we watch a remake, and then we talk about it. Uh, and sometimes, we're not going to lie to you, we play fast and loose on what constitutes remake. <laughs> but in this case, it's an actual we remake. We play fast and loose on what's a podcast yeah, about movies. That's true. That's a valid point. It's all fast and loose. That's what it should be called, fast this and loose. Fast and loose. Um, um, you could have called either of these movies fast and loose because of the amount true. of sex. That's that true. Happens in Literally. And they drive fast. They do. They wow. do. Uh, it's they do a lot of things fast, and then loose. And, ah, but yeah, we watched. Uh, I'm Dan Farley, by the way. <laughs> you can find me at uh, at Dan Farley eighteen on Instagram, and then that's Reggie Parker. I'm Reggie Parker. You can find me at RP Comedy on Twitter and Instagram. Yeah, and you can find me at Jersey Dan eighteen on Twitter too, or X. 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 X oh, you took out the sweatshirt. Yeah. Yeah. X. Shit. Don't give it yeah, to add whatever. Man, it's got. Doesn't matter. But we watched the Thomas Crown Affair, 1968 and 1999, right? That's right. Yeah. 68 99. Yeah. Uh, Thomas Crown, 1968. It's an American heist film directed and produced by Norman... Come on. Norman Jewison. Oh. <laughs> uh, Someone wasn't hiding it. Uh, starring Steve McQueen and Faye Dunley. That's it. That's I'm stopping there. Yeah, you don't need to. Although, uh, Afi Koto is in there. Afi Koto. Yeah, who's... he's... Awesome. He showed. He was like, "Is that young Afi Koto? He was young, but he totally wasn't." Like, exactly, Afi Koto. He was great in this. By the he's way, great. Was All those guys. Alien, uh, Predator, or uh, he was. He's in uh, Alien, and then he's in. Uh, he's in so much shit. He's, he's in, in uh, yeah. Midnight Run. He's in, Midnight Run. Yeah, it's such a. I wish we could do Midnight Run, but I, I mean, we probably do. could find there's, something. There's a way to do it. There is a way to do it, but like we said, fast and loose. Anyway. Um, <laughs> But uh, he's like the only other side character that I was like, oh, this is worth mentioning. Yeah, I guess if you wanted to mention some other people, uh, 
who were actually like Bill, Paul Burke, and Jack Weston. But again, Afi Koto was actually that's yeah, a good point. Just because he was like, hey, I love this guy. He's awesome. Although I will say, this is a complete aside. Um, th so. For those of you who haven't seen the movie, and you have obviously, of course. But when they rob the, they rob a bank in this movie, and he sets up uh, Steve McQueen's Thomas Crown sets up a bank heist, and every one of the guys wear like those G-men fedoras, like the uh, the little fedoras, not the long like Indiana Jones fedora. Sure. Uh, how many more times can I say fedora? But um, sure. okay. so they have the like the little ones. Let me tell you, it's the first time I've ever seen a black dude not be able to pull something off. Yeah, like this is that, that is such a white thing to do. Like only a white dude could pull off that hat. It's, no, like it's the only time I've ever seen. It. I was like, whoa, what is wrong with it? I'm like watching. I can't put it on. I'm like Afikota looks stupid in that. Yeah, hat. that's what it is. Man, he looks great. He does look great though. He's and then the man himself. Oh, the man himself. He's just. Uh, if, if you're a, a cinephile, you know. You know, Mr. Kodo, he's, yeah. he's great. He's in tons of shit. Oh, man. But, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll just give you a quick breakdown of uh, these two films. Yes. <clears throat> the Thomas Crown Affair uh, from 1968, as you mentioned. Uh, heist film directed by Norman Jewison, starring Steve McQueen, Faye Dunaway, Yafe Kodo, and uh, some other people. It was nominated for two Academy Awards. I don't normally do that here, but um, I think it's worth talking about. Uh, written by Alan Trussman. And cinematography by Haskell Wexler. The Thomas Crown Affair, 1999. <clears throat> a romantic heist film directed by John McTiernan, who you may know from things like, uh, what, uh, Die Hard? Die Hard. Um, Die Hard 3. Die Hard 3. Under oh, no, what did he do? Uh, the Predator? Yeah, he, he did that. That's where the Predator thing came yeah. out. Uh, amazing. Made a lot of yeah, that's, that's stuff. Great, especially in that era. I mean, yeah. Oh, man. <clears throat> it's. It's a. Sound like go ahead. Yeah, go no, ahead. no. Uh, like I said, directed by Mr. McTiernan, screenplay by Leslie Dixon and Curve Limmer. Um, again, the original story by Alan Trussman, starring Pierce Brosnan, Rene Russo, Dennis Leary, Fritz Weaver, and Frank Faison. Uh, yeah, music, actually, this is worth talking. Music by Bill Conti. Yeah, Bill Conti. He, he's solid. He's he solid. is solid. But uh, yeah. Um, <clears throat> what? Like, for you, what was your first experience with these? So, I knew of the Thomas Crown Affair. Right. I was very aware of the uh, remake, mm -hmm. not the Steve McQueen version. Um, and then I heard, I remember it coming out and be like, is this just James Bond again? But James Bond's a thief and, like, whatever. And, yeah. Uh, I saw it. I didn't. It was It was fine. It was good. Like, yeah. um, And then I realized that there was a remake of it, and I saw it. And once I found out, like... I got into Steve McQueen later on right. in like when I was in my twenties and I was like, Oh man, Steve McQueen is awesome and then I found out that this is a remake. Well I was like, Well, I gotta see that and sure. I see it's some of the things in that movie are so subtle that I'm like, Is it did I miss it? Like did it and he's like, Oh no, that's just what happened. He's right. like, Oh man, and what he's just it's again, effortlessly cool. And Steve don't get me wrong, Pierce Brosnan, also effortlessly cool. So I mean, early spoilers for this podcast, let me tell you something. Uh, both of them work their angle. They're different films for um, for reasons. Like I would say, the remake is a bit somewhat more action oriented than the yes. original. But like for what each one is doing, I think they um, they pull off whatever it is that is that is yeah it's about. aiming for exactly. Like um, it McQueen, like you said, the effortless cool definitely comes through. Yes, but and then you take it's almost like compensating for the effortless cool with like sleek. Yeah, sleek style of like that stuff, you know, like yeah, yeah. I don't know. No, we'll get into that. For yeah, sure. we'll definitely get into it for sure. But it's uh, those are my first impressions. The first time I saw it, and then when I saw them, uh, I've I've heard people compare this as like one of the better remakes of uh, like I, of and it is I, fucking yeah. sexy. Yeah, I no, I, I don't um, I can see I can see the argument. You know, yeah. there's arguments to be made in. A lot of different directions yeah. with these films. What about you? What's your first? Um, so, yeah, like, when you first said Thomas Crown Affair to me, I was like, what the hell is he talking about? Um, I had never seen either film, but uh, I was doing this sort of um, thing. Actually, I got really philosophical with this. So there's a lyric in the Timbaland and Nelly Furtado song, Promiscuous Girl, where at some point Timbaland raps, they call me Thomas, last name Crown, uh, something about my game, I'm going to put it down, right? And now, for the rest of my life, like, I'm going to think about that lyric 
which before had no context to it. Yes. About these two movies. And, like, it's an actually perfect lyric. But it is. If you were trying to model yourself on um, uh, getting laid, uh, either Thomas Crown uh, is not a Does bad it. place to start. Does it? I mean, like, these dudes have a swaggy swag. They do. Um, so, again, I've never seen the films before, but um, upon viewing... Yeah, I've got a lot of respect for her. Yes, it's great. They're both both wonderful. It, pretty damn cool. And you're like, if any one of them, if your wife left you for either one of them, you'd be like, well, I can't even argue with this. Exactly. No, you couldn't. Could you get mad? I couldn't mm -mm. get mad. It's like, it makes sense to me. Like, in every way, he's better. Absolutely. Anyway. So, we'll give you a quick synopsis. Um, things are a bit different in both films, but they're yes. mostly the same. A very rich and successful playboy amuses himself by stealing stuff. Um, what they steal? Different, but doesn't yes. matter. Um, <clears throat> uh, basically, this guy has a hedge fund, and he doesn't care how rich he is. He's got things to do. Yeah. He, just wants, he just likes the game. He likes the game. He likes the game, bro. He likes the game of it all. So, they steal something of a substance, substantial worth, um, and then there's, there's a... Insurance detective, yes, lady person who basically has to figure out an insurance investigator. An insurance investigator who has to figure out who stole the stuff. If she finds out who stole it, she gets like, uh, in one case it's five percent, in one case it's ten percent. Doesn't matter, but she gets paid if she finds out who does it. She suspects this billionaire playboy, but doesn't have enough evidence. She tries to find more and more evidence, but along the way, I think she starts catching feelings. Catching feelings. Well, at first she starts. Uh, since she's not a cop and mor morals don't play yeah, into it, she like bangs him to get uh, well, to she's see. Not if, a cop. Yeah, she's not a cop to get to get that information. I don't think she's on the clock. Yeah, she's not the, on the clock. And then, hey, she kind of wants to anyway, so mm -hmm. whatever, might as well. Mm -hmm. And that's that. Yeah. Now this this conflict of interest, um, like you said, it blurs the line of morality and, and um, her work with the police. They're trying to figure out, like, hey, are you still? Are you still trying to catch this guy, or what's yeah. happening here? And we find out uh, through both films whether or not um, the the wiles, the, the whatever it is, the charm of Thomas Crown has overtaken this investigator. Yes, and he's also wondering: Did I? Is she with me to be with me, or is she trying to arrest or, me? Exactly. Like, where do the alliances uh, rise? And it's funny that in a movie that's kind of about stealing things. The real important part is the affair. Mm -hmm. um, Thomas Crown's affair with this investigator is the story, and we'll find out uh, what happens. Yes. That's the synopsis. And that's the synopsis, and yes, they're very different. Uh, but I, I was never like, I remember seeing this on TV a lot. The, mm -hmm. um, and with, let me tell you, one of the sneakiest, best sex scenes in a movie of 1999 could offer. You're like, Rene Russo is, first of all, she is, it's, it's kind of refreshing to see. Don't get me wrong. I I will be as pig-headed and um uh, yeah, that's, and that's fine. you know yeah. male horny just, as anybody. Just run. With but it. with um when it comes to seeing, it's nice to see like sometimes two characters that would actually bang. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. Like it's Rene Russo and Pierce Brosnan are the same age. Right. They're the same age in those movies. Like uh, I think I think uh, she's. Uh, I think they're both like 44 <laughs> in the movie. So, so, like, for example, I was, uh, just because we, the, uh, September Steve has been very yes. good to us. Um, I had to recall, because we, we had watched, some time has passed since we talked about Recorded, doing this podcast. Yes. And, um, I did a recap by watching, like, another podcast, and they were doing, like, age-appropriate people. Completely. And, and someone was like, well, what if you did it with, um... I forgot who the two people were. Oh, it was, it was the Lincoln lawyer. It was McConaughey. McConaughey. And then someone said Angelina Jolie. She's like, she's two. I was like, she's two years younger. Two I'm years younger. Right. <laughs> like that. <laughs> it's like, but we're so used to it. Like, I was joking around Dan recently. I watched uh, the 2008 film. Actually, it might be 2006. Either way, it doesn't matter. Uh, yes Man recently. And like, Jim Carrey, who's an old man. Yeah. And Zoe Deschanel, who's a young one. <laughs> yeah, she's quite a young woman. And like, she's under 30, and he's 50. 50, right. Yeah. And that's like that's kind of like the, the Hollywood um, swing at this point, yes. as it were. But, like, yeah, you're right. These people 
fit. And honestly, in a lot of ways, it's actually quote unquote sexier because it's like you believe these two. Yeah, people that they actually would fuck doing the cat Sorry. and mouse thing. <laughs> no, you okay. just, yeah, I whatever. Or, we say it all the time. Yeah, that's yeah. true. But, but they like, would bag. You would. You, know? you would. Yes. Yeah, and you totally believe it, and they the whole thing, and it's like it's sexier because this woman like. It gets to a point, like, this guy, it comes through on the screen, or comes off on the screen of, he's not trying to nail her with, like, oh, come back to my place, and blah, 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 and I got this and this. It's like, she's too smart for that. She's been in this right. game a long time, you right. know? It's not the same. And then you, then you, she has a nude scene. Oh, my lord, is she hot. Really? Like, Russo, yeah. some gorgeous titties. Yeah, Rene Russo, um... Boy, let's just let's just get into it. Uh, we're we're talking about the two films. <clears throat> in the 1968 film, we have Steve McQueen, who plays Thomas Crown. Not gonna say a thing until I talk to my lawyer. <laughs> How do you do? And in the 1999 film, we have Pierce Brosnan, who plays Thomas Crown. Let's play ball. There he goes, bowler hat. Yes. Now just. Again, before we get into the, the actresses here, um, let me tell you something. Both work. Both. Both work. 68. All right. So, in the 1968 film, Thomas Crown robs a bank. Yes. And the way he does it is actually a little bit more disconnected than the way that Pierce Brosnan's Thomas Crown does it. He hires a crew. He lets the crew do what they do. He collects his basically his winnings. And that's like his game. Like... In my head, and I don't know if you agree with me, <clears throat> Thomas Crown in that film... In the 68. 68 is much more cautious and disconnected from the crime. He's like literally doing the crime. Uh, both of these characters are hedge fund um, uh, managers. They run... They own it. They, yeah, they're, they're both so rich, it makes no sense to For steal to anything. Yes. But the only reason to do it is because like, you're just that dude and you're bored. Like, what, why not? See, that is... That's where I... This is where I disagree. Okay. So this is, and I kind of like, Steve McQueen mm -hmm. is stealing it as excitement. Yes. He's, ex Pierce Brosnan is stealing it. Yes, it's exciting. Okay, I, I think but he going. wants the, he wants okay. the I, portrait. The, I agree. Okay. The landscape. I'm 100% with you that you were right. That like, Pierce Brosnan is such a man of distinction. Yes. That like, in his mind, and I, honestly, after like Occupy Wall Street and all the things that happened in our country, this probably hasn't aged well. But like in his mind, he appreciates the art. Yeah, Everybody nobody else, else can is, appreciate no this one, as much as he does. I, I am the person that understands that should own this. Yes, because every other mouth breather just sees ooh a pretty painting, and I see art. Yes, he he is an art enthusiast, complete art enthusiast, and like. Literally, like, to the point that if it means that all he does is he presses a little button in his house and he can look at it for 20 seconds every night, that's all. That's all he wants. That's all. And he can daydream about it and look at it and appreciate the art. The, the art is almost in, like, uh, again, because, like, I think it's hard to talk about either of these films without throwing the misogyny in there with the tits and all that yeah. shit. But, like, the art is a woman. Yeah. It's something to be appreciated, coveted. You know, like, uh, I think that actually, um, we haven't talked about actresses yet, but like, taking a previous character and making them a therapist. Yes. In this one, uh, uh, someone will talk about Faye Dunaway plays his therapist. But like, I think that interplay worked really well. It did. Because when you first get introduced to Tom Scrown, he's talking to his therapist, and she's asking him about his relationship with women, which is very similar to his relationship with art. Yes. Like, look, hey. I just love it. It's, yeah, I love it. I'm all about it. I want more. I want to see more. I want to be more. Whatever. Yeah. And so he, like, if he didn't get the, the. It's not about quote unquote greed when it comes to like, like he's never going to sell it. It's, no, it and that's that's how they put him onto his radar. Mm -hmm. They're like, well, whenever someone sells it, it's good, we're going to get them because they'll know. It's like, well, what if they never sell it? What right. if they're just a collector? They want it for themselves. Right. That's a whole other. That's a whole other bag of hammers. Like yeah. that's. Completely different. But what are they? If he does that, then he, it's that's what they. She automatically. She's like, what about he? He's always there, and right. he loves that photo. So, that's 
a big thing. So it's not, don't get me wrong, he is a thrill seeker and yes. blah, 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 but I don't think he would do it if he didn't get the art at the right, end. Right, right. At the, right. So, as the product. So I do, I do actually, uh, you, you've completely swung me, um, I agree, that for Steve McQueen, the money is kind of like, what is it? Yeah, that? that's, see, that's so much more interesting. Yeah. So I was watching the first one, and I get more sense of it in the first one, because let's be honest, in this modern climate, right. this might be the last movie where you, like, billionaires could still be cool. Yeah, yeah like, exactly. It's like, you don't. Both films. If it both films, <laughs> and you could be like, I feel for this billionaire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you don't. Now you're like, fuck this guy. Yeah. Like, if. Because, like, in the modern sense, Pierce Brosnan's character is a villain. He's a villain. There's no, like, There's no which way the about it. The movie wouldn't be, even be about him in 2020. Absolutely yeah. not. He would never be the protagonist We of this would movie. all be like, take this fucker Yo, down. how dare he steal the public side? I mean, exactly. Exactly. This Monet? He's going to take this Monet from us? It's and like, then steal a Degas? It's, it's actually, um, in some senses, like, uh, again, it depends on what your quote-unquote politics is, but, like, you know the people who are, like, climate change and they, like, throw stuff on paintings? Yeah. Personally, for me, they piss me off. That, um, that really bothers me it, myself. And, like, I understand that, like, the planet, quote-unquote, is more important than art, but, like, in a sense, no. Like, as culture is... The reason for us to exist. Yes, that's it. Comes down to the listen. All of these are, you could do, you could be a plumber, blah blah blah. And, yeah. But if you're not, inner city, well, yeah, you know, by all means, a billionaire who's and, gonna steal it, and right? you're gonna help everything. <laughs> you're gonna help like, you wanna, you're doing what you have to do to survive and better humanity. But what are you staying alive for? Because right. of the things that interest you, right. the things you like, your family, and then. What interests them? And then you get into even, movies, books, even literature, everything. music. This stuff matters. A nation is a symbol, right? Like, yeah. the flag. The, like, if you look at the United States, like, the Senate, the Congress, the White House. Like, all these things are just... I used to live in D.C. They're just things. Like, when you live there long enough, you look at the Washington Monument, you're like, oh, there's that fucking obelisk. Again. Yeah. You know, it's like, eh. It doesn't mean anything to you when you're, like, um, when it's just, like, so inundated. But, like, the concept. That's it's correct. Like the like, it doesn't matter what it is. the The fact that we can all agree that some things are more important than ourselves. Yes. Is that it's like oh, that's then that like raison on they talk. Yeah, you know? and you know, listen, you could fight for climate change and do the right thing, but you I also agree, but like you're not. Up, but yeah, don't fuck Picasso. Up, yeah, don't fuck up Picasso because you don't have the skills to do that, mm -hmm. man. Like. You, right. you can't just tear it down. Like, you don't know the work that it went to do that. Right, and it's like, it doesn't... Like, to me, and again, not to get political or weird and shit, but, like, it's not targeting the people you need to target. Like, if I want to go to the MoMA and look at, uh, like, we mentioned a Picasso, like, or I could take my kid or something, you know, like, a friend, family member. Like, um, don't take that from me because you've got, like, an agenda, you know? Yeah. So, that, that's a bit of an aside, but, like, the whole point of it is that is kind of how Pierce Brosnan's uh, yes. character works, is that the money, he's made so much money that it, money is is monopoly. It doesn't yeah, matter. it doesn't matter to him. And especially in the, the remake. Yeah. He's, a like, Steve McQueen's a millionaire. Right. He's a million, multi, many times over a millionaire. Right. Uh, Pierce Brosnan is a billionaire. Right, right. And an that's a completely different animal, and... But that's also another thing that bothers me. And, like, how do you guys not... They're like, oh, that guy is a finance geek. Like, do you not know who he is? Like, this right. guy, he's on a boat, like, and it's like, the boat's I like, oh, scream. That's great. That scene. And how much of him is based on Richard Branson? Oh, I gotta imagine. I think it's a all, lot of all it. All of it. Like, um, that's why I wore the hat, you know? Yeah. <laughs> this is the boating. Yeah. Dude, first of all, both these movies, um, I think that... I'll, I'll give you this. So, like, in the 1968 film, again, we talk about Steve McQueen. My read on Steve McQueen, uh, the actor, like, when I'm watching all these Steve films, is I just believe that guy might be doing that. Yeah, he might, I just, be, I, he might be that guy. Like, I don't know if he's acting or that he's just that guy. It's like the paraglider, the dune buggy, you know what I'm saying? Like, he's, he is. He, he is doing that. that. <laughs> he is. Exactly. That's the thing. Steve does his own stunts. Yeah. But like, um... He's driving the motorcycle. He's it, it because you're right. He's a millionaire. It almost seems more attainable. Like you could see yourself hanging up some chick you like, like 
on a doom buggy yeah. in the same like, like, but also in the same respect Steve McQueen is a millionaire <laughs> right it's like you don't need to be doing this doom buggy right. shit but here he is like this is fun yeah well I love that about the McQueen character because um, when they're trying to figure out what he's up to most of just like a day in the life yeah of Thomas Crown he's like I'm playing polo I'm, I'm play you know I'm in a glider Parag yeah I'm in a glider with what? this girl much too young for me who's exactly. like a model Exactly, and like, he's doing what you would kind of expect a, like a cool, a cool no, yes. to do. Not, yeah, he's not, not like a, not like a Zuckerberg douchebag, like a guy you kind of want to be. So <laughs> this is this is my what I was going on with my take. Where sure, I was saying like as far as Pierce Brosnan goes, but then Steve McQueen, yeah, when he's robbing the bank, like he specifically says like it's against the system. Okay. Like, this is why I'm doing it. He does it. He, there's, if you've ever read about, like, the Vanderbilts and the, um, and the Vanderbilts or, like, the uh, Rockefellers or the Carnegies or any of the people that, like, the, were the first billionaires. Mm -hmm. Literally the richest people that's ever lived. Sure. They got so obsessed with the competition. The money was secondary. Right. It's the the rush of right. what they're doing of right. winning this game. Right. Same thing with Steve McQueen. Like well, when he sells them the company. Yeah. He's not selling it because like oh I'm done I've done all I want to do. He's doing it because he won. Right. Like, he's like this. You paying me when and the first thing he says they're like gloating like I can't believe we got a Thomas Crown property. He's like you overpaid. Yeah. That's him winning. Yes. And he leaves. Yes. You you get that from like Boker like the McQueen one is just so visceral. It's like I don't know what you're gonna tell him. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You guys, yeah. You guys are a bunch of morons. You're like this wasn't worth any nope. of that. Yeah, none of that. But thank you. Yeah, give me my check. By the way, I'm gonna take this check. I'm gonna do the exact same thing. I'm gonna beat you again. Yeah, I'm gonna do it again. <laughs> I could keep doing this all day. It's <coughs> it's the rush of it of beating the system. Right. This guy from the outside winning all of these games. Yes, like that he doesn't. He's not supposed to win, but he totally is winning. Meanwhile, like, also, he's like the quintessential, like, American, arrogant asshole. Yes. Playing the most elitist sport ever. Right. Polo. And he's kicking the shit out yep. of people. Yep. That's, like, almost right there alone a metaphor. But, yes, that metaphor, but even, like, even, like, once you bring the love interest into the game, it's just like, I bet I could. Mm. I bet I could. Why not? Yeah. You're investigating me? Eh. I bet I could still nail you. I think I could get away with this and... And, know? yeah, it's both of it. And then none of that tell you but, that I did it. But does. Yeah, and then he does. <laughs> and from the first thing, it's like, so how do you think you're going to catch me? Right. He, I'm fully, both of them, right. fully admit it. They're like, hey, I know what you're doing here. You're right, but prove it. Right. Right. You're not wearing a wire. It's so it's so good, it's and he's so just, good. and he's, he's so cool. Yeah, he's so. Steve they're McQueen. both. They're both cool. Yes. Yeah. Well, so okay, Steve McQueen. Here's my thing. Um, not that he's like never, especially when he's playing Thomas Crown. Not that he's never man, but like, he's kind of like. He a, kind of is. He's like a rugged. Yeah, he's definitely a rugged. He like, built it himself. Right. Like, like you could see that guy brick by brick, just started out, figured it out, just. Did what he hustling. had to do. Hustling. Like, that's the thing about Steve McQueen. He's a, a straight up hustler. Um, handsome guy, but like, you know. He's not... also handsome in the fact of like, he's the most handsome guy at the bar you hang out Yes. With. Yeah. Like, he's, he, you know a guy that right. is, is better looking, but at that bar, he's the most handsome right. guy. Right. But then like, Pierce Brosnan looks like a venture capitalist. Like, yes. a smooth, like. Which is why the art angle works, because he looks like a guy who should be in that space. Exactly. Like, he should be the guy picking up the little, the little hors d'oeuvre and the, the champagne glass and be like, oh, yeah, did you know the, the on way of the... Like, just... Yeah. He, he's he's charismatic. Um, so, okay. Here's the thing. Steve McQueen, I think, could beat me in a fight. Pierce Brosnan, I think I'd kick his ass, but it's, it's, I'm not going to win even yeah. if I did. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right? Like... I don't. That's the difference. Yeah, and also Steve, like Steve McQueen, is like an arrogant. Mm -hmm. It it's the level of, to quote the poet Kid Rock. Yeah, my um, name is Kid. Yeah, my. <laughs> <Sorry>. uh, it's <laughs> not cocky if you back it up. Like he's cocky, but then he doesn't. Right. Like he, they, Pierce Brosnan specifically says in it, like don't glow. Right. 
Right. And There's he, no reason to go. And he's right. I won. Like, and he's just, he's going to win, but he doesn't. That's what's so cool about either character. Like, you don't know what, you don't know what they're up to, right. but you know they're going to win. Right. You right. know what I mean? Like, you know they're, like, ahead of it. But, but you know why you know that? Because they're telling you that. Yeah. Like, the men themselves are like, I'm not going to lose. Yeah. Like, you see Steve, Steve McQueen, and you're like, Clearly, he's not going to lose. You see Pierce Brosnan, you're like, this guy neither one of them, can't miss. Neither one of them for one second, other than when they're fucking, yeah. are sweating at yeah. all. Oh, even yeah. that, they're like, I don't even know if they're sweating. Yeah, they're like, who? Let's go again. Yeah. yeah. Oh, they go. And, and they, they go. go. And, they, and go. They, go. Go. they go. I think, um, yeah, they're, again, from, like, because of who the characters are, not the actors, but, like, the characters of Thomas Crown, his, like, sort of billionaire swag in a modern world not as cool as they would have been in like the 90s and the 60s. No. However, that doesn't matter. If you go off just the strength of the two actors and what they're doing, it's like, no, these guys, these are two cool people. They're cool in their era. They're cool in any era. Right? So like, if Pierce Brosnan, it's almost like that that dumb thing guys do is like, Yo, what would happen if like, uh, Rocky and then like Danny Ocean were in the same like like yeah they're different and there's pros and cons to both uh, approaches but like both those guys like tip the cap to each other like all right yeah like, all right it, there's respect like you would never be like uh it's like I'm trying to think of an example it's like Tom Brady and I don't know, give me someone else, like uh like a rock star it's like yeah. Okay, I know you're the man in this space. Yeah, I'm the man in this space. I'm Mick Jagger, you're Tom Brady, yeah. something like that. It's okay. Like, okay, it's a push. Yeah, it's like, we're all going to get a lot of yeah. win here. Yeah, and, and uh, that is a, a preview of how I feel about these two actors in this particular setting. We usually say, who did it better? This is a push. This yeah, is this like, is a push, but I, I will still give the edge to Steve McQueen because he looks like he's having so much more he fun. He looks... Like he's having a blast. Yeah, he's having a blast. And, <laughs> and I will also give the edge of Steve McQueen in terms of if the movie is about a heist, I think he's done much more to disconnect himself from Correct. the heist. He's like, not getting caught. He's never getting caught. There's like he Thomas and uh, Pierce Bros is way too exposed. Pierce like this wants to get caught. Yeah, this is like it's so overly complicated. Like, don't get me wrong, Steve McQueen's is complicated, mm -hmm. but he's also not there. Like well, he's well, even from who hired you? I don't know. Right, even from the jump, and that's the difference between these two characters. Uh, Steve McQueen, he's Mister X. Um, when they first introduce, like from the McQueen. intro, first scene of the movie. Yep. Yeah. The guy walks in, he's, he, there's a bright light and he's got a voice changer, which Steve McQueen loves the voice changers yeah. in that movie. Yeah. Like he, everybody talks to on the phone is a voice changer. It, uh, and he makes. It's like the light's so bright the guy can't see him. The guy right? can't see him. He can't, he can't tell. He, he doesn't know what he looks like, doesn't know what he sounds like, yep. nothing. He just knows he's going to get 10 grand and then he gets money to buy a car. And like, I will give McQueen's heist this, again, in that sense of like disconnecting himself from the crime. This guy does that. This guy does exactly. that. Exactly. This guy does that. It's like the Manhattan Project. And you can catch one of them. Yeah, and, and it doesn't gonna matter. Know a goddamn thing. No about one's going to know anything about it. Yep. Like it's you'll catch him. Like, well, listen, I was here to. I was supposed to stop an elevator. Right. That's what I. They hired me to do. I right. stopped the elevator. It's like when you when you hear about the different factions of the uh, Manhattan Project. Yep. When like everybody would be working on a different part of it, but they had no idea that they were right. working on an atomic bomb. Exactly. Exactly. It's like all of those things. So if, even if you lost someone, it's like, well, we might be able to make up for it and whatever. And because this heist is, um, although, yes, it is about Thomas Crown, but Thomas Crown isn't even at the heist. No. He's right? not even there. So even if they get busted, all right. And for the director of the film, it, you get, um, I thought it was actually kind of cool when they were doing some of the split screen. Oh, the split screen I thought was really cool. Thought, and then, like, the watch yeah. shows them looking... Because they make he makes them synchronize the watch with the with, it's completely dated, but there was a time I even this is before even my time. Yeah. But you used to be able to have to call for a specific time. Right. So that would be the Greenwich Mean Time of like by time zone. Sure. So that was what the time was. Like if you called this number, it was eight oh five right. now. And then you're like, okay, so you sync your watch to that, and like that's what he's telling them to do. Yeah. And then calling them at specific moments, different places. And they have to be at that. They have to be there. It was amazing. 
And um, for a movie that happens in 68, because we watched some older films, a fairly, like, decent, modern-looking mm -hmm. ice scene. Mm -hmm. Like, when, uh, when they throw the little smoke shit down, like, just the way the camera follows it, the canisters having the people in the walls, like, um, it, because movies like this inspire art, like, it looks like a lot of the high scenes I've seen today. Yes. But this is like, oh, I was, did, and tell me, did you not get this, like, that the bank really reminded you of Inside Man? It did. It did. It like, did. It, I was like, yeah. I had to look up, I was like, is this the same bank? Yeah. And it's like, no, they demolished this bank. Right. By the way, I was reading about this in this scene in this movie. They did this during business hours. Everyone that worked there in the bank knew that they were filming a movie. Yeah. The customers did not know that oh, they were filming God. a heist movie. They were like, oh, someone's robbing the bank. Sorry, go ahead. That's problematic. That's so... <laughs> but they didn't bother them, so they were like, oh, we weren't really traumatized. So they yeah. were like, okay, we just figured they were taking their money. Yeah. No, that's cool. That's wild. I, I will say, that is the big difference. Um... Again, the McQueen Thomas Crown, like we mentioned, is doing the heist actually for the heist. Yes. And um, that makes the heist kind of interesting in terms of the layout and the plan. Yeah. Right? Like, the it's interesting what Pierce Brosnan does and, like, the titanium suitcase and all this yeah. stuff. But, like, the two he's titanium. so... In, that's true. He's so involved that, like, it doesn't feel as, like, even though the plan in a lot of ways is kind of more creative, yeah. it doesn't... It's, it's not he's real. Too, he's too close to it. You know what also, like when you're watching the Steve McQueen one, you're like, you know, I bet they could actually do this. I agree. I bet they could get I away agree. with this. Whereas like in the, the 1999 one, you're like, no. Yeah, no. He's caught immediately. Mm -hmm. He's caught. There's too many, even in 1999, don't get me wrong, this is pre-9-11. There weren't as many cameras. There was, but also there's quite a few shots of the Twin Towers in this movie, oh, yeah. by the way. Yeah. But, um... They, there's not enough, that he's getting caught, man. There's 100%. not enough. 100%. He's, the plan is too convoluted. Yeah. So, I guess, like, um, the Thomas Crown and the plan feel more grounded in reality. But I think that, like, the stylized nature, and I think that's where, where 99 makes its mark. Is like, it's a pretty slick movie. Like, some of the stuff that Pierce Brosnan is doing is like, like, I ain't never seen someone race with a... In the water, in the water world boat, whatever yeah. that is. And I actually started watching some of that stuff, like uh, whatever GT or something. But like, people actually race like that. And mm -hmm. like, it, I was like, that's cool. It's like an intro to a world that like is inaccessible to me because I'm not a billionaire, right? Yeah. But like, I think that's where Pierce um, gets to play. Like, they both have their their toys and their fun. But like, a dune buggy and a glider. And I know it's the '60s, but like, I could, yeah, I could pull that. Off. Yeah, I, he's like, I could do that. I could pull it off. The, I don't have to be a billionaire to do that. Getting a whole team of people to, like, crash a boat, like, I can't do that. I can't, yeah. That's that's a great scene. That's a great scene, and it, it's the way they filmed it with the, the waves crashing yeah. and everything, and then um, they have, uh, they that the, the boat tips, and mm -hmm. then when it actually fell, Pierce Brosnan was actually up there doing that. And they were like, yeah. oh, no, we killed James Bond. Like, <laughs> oh, no. sure. that, which is also, like, people forget that this movie was right in the middle of... His run as James Bond. Yeah, he was. Yeah. This was like another Pierce Brosnan movie that wasn't James Bond. So sweet. even like there, there's a scene when he's supposed to be in a tuxedo, right? And then he's his tie is all undone because he uh, he wasn't he's under contract that he can only wear a tuxedo in James Bond. That's so funny. So he goddamn Remington Steel. <laughs> and there was another thing too. Like he got in. I think there was something too with his watch. Okay. Like he he was contracted because this is. I, the era of James Bond, where everything he did was like he right. could only wear specific watches, right? Because and so they had to pay like an exorbitant amount of money for him to wear the watch that he's wearing. And by the way, kind of a shitty watch. Yeah, like I would have been as happy if it was a Mickey Mouse watch. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. it wasn't anything special. Wow. Although it was super expensive. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> again, I think ultimately, like similar, um, but different. And yes. Neither one's like, there's no real winner, but I do agree with you in the sense of like, if I had to take the man and the heist together, um, I do prefer Steve McQueen. But like, when you get into like the 
symbolism and all that stuff, like what it means to him. I like that Brosnan. I do like it. Like, I also like. Be, I kind of like the way they they uh, shoot. Like, cause in the beginning, it's all Thomas Crown mm -hmm. in both movies. Yeah. And then once he he steals the precious, let's say in both <laughs> right. movies, then uh, the char the female character, the female leads get introduced because right. that's why else would they be there? Right. They're not going to be there. So the and then for the rest of the '99 movie, it's pretty much through Ray Renew's Ray Ray Renee Russo. Russo's yeah. eyes, um, and she. You don't know anything about Thomas Crown. Right. Other than he stole this thing. Right. That's all you know. And then right. you're like looking, you're like, oh, you, and you kind of pick up stuff here or there. But like even at the, uh, spo well, of course, spoiler alert, but he, he's with a, a young woman right. that you think that he's sleeping with. And she thinks he's sleeping with. And you're like, oh, he's, he's uh, having sex with this model. But it turns out that it's like his friend who's also an artist forger. Um, and it's his daughter who forged the painting. But. Yeah. Well, like, that, that, that is what's cool about the 99 film is that, um, 68 is so, like, it, it's a very simple film, you know, like, uh, in terms of what's going on. A lot of characters, like, I mean, characters, not much is really fleshed out. No. Know? It's kind of like this dude, and, you know, maybe, like, people that got involved in the crime who get jammed up, but, like, they're inconsequential as well. Yeah. No reason to have them is to get jammed up. Yeah. Right? But, like, um, the 68 film, uh, like you mentioned, the model character is just kind of there. Yeah. We don't know anything about her. We never learn anything about her. But, like, at least in 99, there's a reason why she's there. Yeah. And, like, I know why you think me and this chick are a thing, but I assure you, it's purely business. And yeah. then you find out it is. It is business. It is business. Because you're seeing it through her but eyes he that he was business. telling the whole... What? Yeah, but he also probably banged her. Yeah, but that's, 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 he's that's, a gentleman. That's, he's, that's, he's a gentleman. That's part of it. <laughs> that's part of his M.O. I mean, he... Uh, so, but he... The whole thing of him doing that, you're like, okay, maybe he does, maybe he doesn't. Uh, but Steve McQueen, you're like, well, this guy's the good guy. You right. Know? And although I did love the... Um, uh, and to Reggie, Reggie and I were talking about... Uh, uh, certain things off camera about uh, DUIs and stuff. Like, but when he, the <laughs> cop is watching him and he, he knocks him out. He like, uh, by the way, whenever Steve McQueen knocks someone out, quote unquote knocks him out in the movie, I actually believe it because it looks like he hits the crap yeah. out of them. He's like, ah! like, he's like Jesus Christ. <laughs> like, I think he might, that guy might actually be dead. Yeah. Get a doctor. It's like, and then he pours booze all over him and like shoves him and I was just thinking, Oh, 1968 in New York City, police officer. There's no way that's a DUI. I don't yeah, care no. if he runs through a goddamn post office. I know. Like, I know. it's... You, you'd have to literally murder someone. Yeah. It's a DUI. It has to be on such a level, like... Yeah, it's gonna, like, oh, he's embarrassed. He'll probably get jokes made fun of. Which is exactly what happens. Right. But... I think, um... You know... Again, what the character means for the director in both films... I like this kind of like vignette, uh, split screen, multi screen thing where it, I know I keep saying it, but like it truly feels like it's just a day in life. Yeah, just it a is. Day in life for uh, it is a Steve day in McQueen life. Or, or Thomas Crown. But we all know that we've inserted Thomas Crown to mean Steve McQueen. Yes. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, we kind of, well, I figure we're just going to, since they're both named the same thing, we call one Steve McQueen. Yeah, of course. Brosnan. But like, I, I mean, like, like literally, yeah, like, he's like as the actor. I'm like, but and I was, I was also reading like that they, they did not want him for this part. That he crazy. had to like lobby really hard to get it because they were like, dude, you're like a mechanic. Like you can't be oh, like this debonair. They've never been yeah. more wrong. It's like yo, this guy's crushing it. Dude, Steve McQueen does not miss. Yeah, bro. it's almost like he's also kind of like. They're like vibes of, um, this is outlandish that I'm about to say, okay. this, but like there are vibes of him of, uh, as like Rodney Dangerfield and back to the, back to school. Okay. Like he's the millionaire and he's like at his own party. Like he's like just slamming the beers yeah. and shit. He's like, ah, oh, what, like, what are we doing here? What kind of food is this? Like, right. Oh God, this is terrible. Whatever. Like, and he's like the outsider, but he's the rich one. Right, you right. know, and he's like, oh, this is super. which yeah. makes sense because it's like I'm against the system. The system is what's corrupt. Of course. So I'm gonna, I'll, I'll play corrupt. You want to be that? But even like, 
I'm, he's already at the top of the mountain. Like, I know it's corrupt. I'm, I'm running the show. I know this is corrupt. Who cares? Mm -hmm. Like, just, just do more. Who cares? Like, what's the difference? What's the difference between robbing you this way or robbing you that? Yeah, yeah it doesn't matter. <laughs> it's all the same to him. Like, like for the average man, a bank robbery looks like a robbery. But actually, what I do as a hedge fund manager is more yeah. robbery more every robbery, single day. More highway robbery. But like, and when he, he uh, this was a little more hands on. And I, I kind of like the scene when they're they're he, they're telling him like, "Well, you'll never be able to touch a dollar of that money." He's like, "Okay, yeah. <laughs> like, what the hell do I do?" Yeah, right. Oh, I guess I got like uh, several million dollars to touch beforehand. Yeah, you no. Know, like, so I just touch my money instead right. of the money that I have as a backup in the Swiss bank account that no one asks any questions about. Okay, so funny. But like, I will g give it this: the uh, the remake. Um, Again, talking about the direction of what they can do with it. I, I do actually appreciate that he's such an art fan. Because, like, I'm sure at some point we'll talk about, like, the last kind of heist thing. But, like, what they do and, like, the artistic connection to it. and Yeah. Uh, like, that is, for me, that is fun. You it know? is fun. It's fun. It's oh, a nice like, reference. I mean, we might as well talk about it now. Sure. The final. Dude, the, I thought the, the final. Uh, yes, it's the homage to uh, Man with an Apple or yeah. whatever. Um, and, um, Margit's the son of man. The son of man. Yeah. It's the if you ever seen it, it's an art piece where it's a guy with a bowler hat can't see his face because there's an apple in front of it. Yeah. And um, so here's the difference here. Uh, in the original Thomas Crown Affair, there's one bank robbery happens once, and we all try to figure it out throughout the rest of the film. Um, in this one, he stole the art. Uh, like I mentioned, he literally has a button in his house. He looks at the art, and then he, he's so good at stealing the art. He puts the damn thing back. He puts it back. <laughs> and then he forged another art piece so good that he, like, hits the sprinkler system and it reveals, like, all the paint, wash it off. There's the art that you were looking for the whole no, time. No, the whole time. It's been here the whole I, time. I stole it, I put it back, and I just, I was just fucking with you. I was oh. fucking with you, but I appreciate it still. But I, I do actually really, really, um, it can be a bit cheesy, but I love that scene. They has all the guys with the bowler hats. The bowler hats. I thought, thought it was very interesting. Suitcase. I thought it's, that it's, was very it's, interesting. It looks amazing. Too. It's it's amazing. My only problem was with was okay. Well, this would all be locked down. Yes. And everyone with a bowler hat is under arrest. Correct. Okay. There we go. There and it is. Until we find the goddamn. Uh, oh, here's Thomas Crown. We yeah. know he took it. You're under arrest. Yeah. It's like um, they pretend as if like oh no we can't ruin this like middle school. Um, um, field trips day like we can't lock down a museum because um, what could ha like no you're right they would just lock it down mm. like everyone stop where the hell you are nobody keep moving yeah museums locked and we're gonna nothing no one's leaving until we figure this yes out. exactly and then even her like and even her dilemma of like oh should I have told them but it was like yeah. well you told them already yeah. so it's over There's a, <laughs> you can't do anything more you're not actually a cop um, and then, but I think I do think it's very fun. It's a fun that they scene. keep switching it's it back and forth. You're like, oh, this is neat. You try to like follow. It's like that uh, the egg game. It's like a windmill in your mind. No, <laughs> it's like a windmill. That <laughs> no, is like that. It's like this shell game. The shell like, game, yeah. Where they are just following it back. I thought it was very fun. Also, I they there was the other thing like we could just run away. They're like, well, how can you run away like throughout? It's like you could. With enough money, you can get pretty far. Yeah, it's like right. Well, it's and you're like thinking about it like, hey man, if I'm gonna hide. With a billion dollars, it's pretty easy to hide. Yeah. Just go to that island that he's on. Yeah, like what he course. that he's railing her out on. <laughs> that and by the way, that I you'd have to have that island, right? Right. It's the dopest island yeah, ever. It's, it's pretty like, nice. the, are what he's starting Jurassic Park over here? This is awesome. And then also you're like reading watching that Richard Branson documentary. He's like, Oh, he has an island just like that. Right. Oh, of course he does. I, yeah. It's like, you know, again, just to reiterate, because like I I'm glad we spent this time on Thomas Crown himself. Um, like we mentioned, it's a push. They're both phenomenal, but like, you get a little something with each one, and it makes it feel like it's worth having two different films. Yes. Like, the Brosnan approach to it, absolutely worth The slick, debonair, yeah. uh, like, there's, there's a level to, um, like, if you gave the backstory of Thomas, Steve McQueen's mm -hmm. Thomas Crown, you could be like, well, he was in World War II. Right. Like, you, he might have done that. He started a small yeah, business. Yeah, well, he started a small know. business. He grew into this. But he still has all these skills that would make him mm. an incredible thief. Right. Um, it's kind of like in, um, if you ever, like, I think you guys did it before, pre-me. Yeah. Uh, BD. 
before dinner. Before uh, you, that you did Ocean's Eleven. Yes, we did Ocean's So, 11. like, all those guys, they had all these skills. That's all they did was in the army. Right. Now they're no longer in the army. What right. do I do? Well, I blow things up. That's what I do for a living. Yeah. Oh, okay, a, how can we do this? We can rob a run. casino. Oh, yes! Yeah. Um, like, so that, there's like that, but it's also at the same time, it's 1968, the country is absolutely fucked. Yep. Like, uh, Martin Luther King got shot, Malcolm X got shot, JFK got shot, mm -hmm. Martin Luther King got shot, RFK got shot, every, like, people in high places are getting murdered, and then you have the counterculture rising back up, so you have this billionaire who's a part of the culture, right. but he's robbing things right. for the sake of robbing them. Which, like, I think you're right. Like, if you talk about origins, like, because he probably came from more humble beginnings. Yeah, it's and he's like, probably in the army. Yep. And it's like, you know what? Screw this. Yeah. I don't care how much I profit. Like, yeah. screw this. Let's, yeah, just, let's go. Who cares let's about the money? I don't care. Down. Like, that's what he's, like, giving them, like, how you know, you'll make, uh, I'll give you $10,000 in cash. Like, that's coming out of him. He doesn't even oh, yeah. care if he... Dude, he... I, look, he's just doing it for the love of the game. Yeah, it's to mess with the system. So you have now a rebellion. He's like the rebellious nature. Right. And Pierce Bros is not a rebel. Like, he's not doing yeah. it. He's doing it because I want to do it. it it's... <clears throat> Pierce Bros. It might as well have been a really expensive bottle of wine. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. it, it's just the culture of it. Um, but moving, moving forward, because, like, I know we were talking about railing people out and stuff like that. Um, <clears throat> in the 1968 film, Faye Dunaway Who plays... Who couldn't look better, Oh, man. my oh God. My God. Oh, Dude, I always thought... Oh, my God. I always thought... I was kind of like... I, listen, when it came to Faye Dunaway, like, after seeing Chinatown and Network and all sure, these other... Sure. I was like, whatever. I, I don't get it. I don't see the appeal. Oh, like, no, whatever. No, no. And then I see that in this, I'm like, she is gorgeous. Amazing. Uh, Faye Dunaway plays Vicki Anderson, the insurance investigator in this, and... Yeah. Round three. You won a round. That's your only round so far. Yeah, no, I mean, she was great. Yeah, and talk about a year. She came, she was doing this right after she made Bonnie and Clyde. Yep, yep. Like, damn. Like, literally, like, the entire draw, I watched the trailer for the 68 film, and... If you watch it, you would not know what the movie's about, but you do know Steve McQueen and Faye Dunaway are in because that's like the whole <laughs> trip. In the windows of your mind. In the windows. Uh, versus Rene Russo, who plays uh, Catherine Banning, an insurance investigator and Thomas's lover. I saw him wreck a $100,000 boat because he liked to splash. Phenomenal. She's great. She's great. Um, <clears throat> both of them? Awesome. Um... I'm, uh, in terms of just, like, the overall acting as, like, the insurance investigator, I'm leaning towards Faye Dunaway. Me too. But when it comes... It's a little too... The Rene Russo. Over the top with Rene Russo. It's, it's... Some of the best costuming, though, I've ever seen in my life. That's fair. Especially with the comparison of the, uh, the symbolism of, uh, art as a woman. Mm -hmm. Like, her... Everything is put together so well and so meticulously yes. and so on purpose. Like she's a work of art. Right. And, like you could tell from the the clothing all the way down. And they they saw with it because Faye Dunaway also has is impeccably dressed. She looks great. It's the costumes are out of control. Good. Everything is beautiful. And then you could see what they did with that. They're like, how do? That's what I when you made that point, I was kind of like, I almost feel like they did that secondary mm -hmm. because that's not the case in the, the original. Right. So they're like, how do we make this deeper? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that you're very, you're a hundred percent right on with your uh, analysis, but it's, it's almost feels like it was forced. It's like, you're taking this character aspect of Faye Dunaway and making it the symbolism of the, the remake. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. And um, I will also say that uh, a nice touch is Faye Dunaway being the therapist mm. for Thomas Brown. Because, uh, like you mentioned, like we, we make all these assumptions about um, Steve McQueen's character, but like Pierce Brosnan, I, I like it the sense that we get to hear his thoughts on when, about just life in general. Yeah. His thoughts about women and different things through the therapist. And uh, that's a lot of fun and a nice little cameo. There. And also, this is this is pre Sopranos, man. Yeah. This is not yeah, people not, don't feel like people it. don't go to they don't talk about therapy that open right. like that. And Pierce Brosnan 
By no, I bet he doesn't have anything, any real reason that other than like he's depressed or whatever, sure. or needs to talk about some stuff. Like, there's no outlying like, oh, he shot up a school or he's cutting right. himself or he's doing something that like, oh, listen, Thomas Crown needs help. Like right. they that he's ordered or needs to see like a therapist, like in a Goodwill Hunting Whoop. style. Like he's just, hey man, this is good for me. I like this. It's Whoop. healthy, and it is. And no, for sure. And uh, of course it is. And I, I want that to be. But in 1999, I mean, I remember that. There was kind of like, what? he's going to a psychiatrist? What's wrong with him? Right, right. Instead of Thomas Crown, it was like, hey, I'm just enjoying I'm. It's good to talk and go through my psyche, go through right. things. And, like, I think the framing, too, helps him in that time frame. That, like, the whole conversation really is about his relationship with women. Yes. And, um... Every like, conversation is that, with her. Exactly, exactly. Which also is great background for... The 99 Thomas Crown. I think we get a little bit more depth out of him uh, mm -hmm. because of this. Not that he's thinking too deeply other than getting laid, but that's okay. Um, <clears throat> what's super cool about that, too, is that, like, with both of these films, Thomas Crown, like, this Thomas Crown in 99 is kind of, born, like, there's no woman that can match him. Yeah. And then Rene Russo shows up. Same thing as uh, Thomas Crown in 68. And, and, oh, and there's this person who actually somewhat, like, she's got a bit of a brain can kind of, like, she can contend with me. Like, now, um, who wins out, I guess we'll find out, but, like, the fact that there's someone who actually can match his intellect to an extent yeah. is, like, a huge uh, upside for both these characters. Yeah, but he's also not looking. Like he's, no, not, he's, he's not like and, and for women at all. Happens, he just, he just, just happens, happens that. that this Whereas like you could tell Pierce Brosnan's like, I would love to be married. That's true. That's true. Yeah, that and then like to have the Rene Russo character show up. Uh like we mentioned, Faye Dunway to me feels like she actually might be investigating her crime. Yeah. <laughs> Rene Russo, um, Yes, and no, she feels like she's going to bang Thomas Crown. Yes, she's Thomas Crown. She's back to Thomas Crown, and she's like, hey, you know what? I'll investigate this crime until when I need the money again. Right. Like, and then I'll try and get this. And once right. I do, I'm not investigating a crime for another, I don't know, six years. Yeah, and then you've got, um, in 68, I don't even know who the equivalent would be. Um, who, Dennis Leary you're talking about? Yeah, I don't know. It doesn't matter. Um, uh, maybe Tom Rusky. So in 68, there's a character named, uh, there's an actor, Tom Rusky, who plays the private detective or whatever. Good night, Vicky. Have a good time. Oh, Eddie, I'd like you to meet Thomas Crown, Mr. Crown. Lieutenant Eddie Malone, criminal investigation. I'm not going to say a thing until I talk to my lawyer. <laughs> And then in 99, you got Dennis Leary, who plays Detective Michael McCann. Do you have any idea what kind of flesh-eating lawyers this guy's going to have? Hmm? Um, I don't want to spend too much time on him, but, like, adding the McCann character is, like, 68, whatever, it almost feels irrelevant to me. But, like, McCann is, like, really interacting with her about, like, this crime. Uh, maybe it's because of the more fleshed-out characters and Dennis Leary being this sort of third uh, He's Billy. the third lead. Yeah, for sure. Um, for sure he is. Although, I will say, listen, man. Him. You don't need him. You don't. But he, that's, see, I was thinking about why you don't need him. But he, he's literally every man. Yes, he is He's the every man. Mm -hmm. He's divorced. He, and he does a great job of, like, so he hits on Rene Russo. Right. And then yes. Rene Russo starts going out with Thomas Crown, or... Starts banging Thomas Crown. Right. And he's like, huh. He's, he's the audience watching this movie. Yeah. He's yeah. sitting there like, oh man, that looks so much. Like, and him as, him as the character, in every aspect, yeah. Pierce Brosnan is better. He's oh, more yeah. handsome, yeah. he's smarter, they he's richer. Like the worst he's, haircut he's, haircut he's, I know, he's got the worst haircut and like... Like, keep him, and like, and he's just sitting there like, yeah, I guess, go bang him. Like, of course, why wouldn't you bang him? But, you know, it's like, which, I'll give the movie credit for this. He's so secondary that, like, you're not, like, it allows Thomas Crown to continue to be a hero. Yes. Of the film, because it's not like we expect Dennis Lear to do anything. About no. It. But you could watch him and be like, he, 
If he d killed himself in that kitchen halfway through, and by the way, his kitchen's very nice. Like his nice his kitchen. house is nice. It's a nice kitchen. And he he's not like he's not bad at his job. Right. He's not like particularly great. He's not like flashy and coming in like oh this rock star. He's like we're doing this by the numbers, blah blah blah. Right. And like he went in there trying to get with the search warrant, and then uh, what's his name? Um, Jackie Treehorn has a uh, <laughs> And, and also Roadhouse guys. Uh, oh man! He comes in uh, as his lawyer and rips him apart like it's that. He so doesn't good. get in. But also, I don't. If he actually has a search warrant, there's nothing the lawyer yeah, can do. Nothing. Um, nothing. It's I don't know what he said to him. I just, I just yeah. But like, it is a nice. It actually works better than the Succeed film. The dynamic between Dennis Leary and Rene Russo, because like he's really trying to play by the book and like the movie's more fleshed out so like mm -hmm. when she's like I got this I'm gonna fucking get it. and she's like she's laughing so at him yeah <laughs> yeah like, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna get in there trust me yeah, trust me he gonna get button. in I'm gonna get in <laughs> uh, <laughs> whatever <laughs> is necessary <laughs> and it's like oh I keep a place here oh yeah. you keep a place here I I've been living in the city I barely have a place remember he says that but like he's got a very nice house like everything it's just I, you're watching it and then you're like but he's not Pierce Brosnan right. like how could you how could I even compare to this guy I think Faye Dunaway has such a better poker face when it comes to Thomas Crown yeah. that like she's still doing her job where like there are scenes like because at this point they've already banged multiple yes. times it's pretty crazy like when um when Thomas Crown is basically doing the second heist which you don't have in the first movie um and she she might as well be like He's grabbing like her own the, the you know? Yeah, she's like horned oh, up yeah, because the like, robbery's oh, going so oh, well. Yeah, exactly. She's like, oh, she's like, oh, what oh, a match! Oh, oh, no, oh, oh my god! Oh, when they're playing, oh, we didn't even talk about like the oh most, man the the, the two most the two most sexy scenes in any mo in the yeah. movie. Yeah. One, it's them having sex in time. Oh, in, sure, in ninety nine. Sure. It's like, wow, these guys are going out. Like, and that's the other thing, too. With, like, and it Jen, goes on. It goes on. It's like, oh, this is still going. Yeah, yeah. The synchronizer watch. Yeah, and then <laughs> the, uh, with the, they're, that's the other thing with the Dennis Leary thing. Like, everything you, you can be like, am I, um, sorry. <laughs> no, it's not good. It's like, is, uh, it's like, at least maybe I have a bigger dick. Like, no, Pierce Brosnan has a bigger dick. Right, 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 Trust no, me. No shot. He's, no shot. he's slaying it. <laughs> like, in everything, he's better. But then, that's definitely the sexy scene. But then, and in the Thomas Crown Affair 68, the sexiest scene in the movie that is when they're playing chess. That chess scene is... You're like, oh, that's that tells you where their minds are. Like, this, right. she's like, oh, look at this handsome bastard. But yeah. in that, that one, she's like, this is the smartest man I've ever seen in my life. Right. And he's like, this is the smartest woman I've ever seen in right. my life. Right. Like, we will have the smartest <laughs> children that ever lived that rob banks and solve it their own crime. Of course. <laughs> this is a film, like... It's like, oh, what's this, like a uh, rook? Uh, yeah. Like, it's just so suggestive. And such, like, I will say this, that, um, which is just uh, part of films from that era. 68 draws a lot of things out. Yeah. You get, a, 99's a bit more action-oriented. Action yeah. And uh, I appreciate that. Like, um, I like them both for what they do. Like, I'm, I don't want um, 68 to be more action-oriented because I feel like the heist was so good. Yes. Especially for the era. Like it, it's it a, speaks for itself. It looks great today. Yeah. Like it, I if you put that heist in front of any film today, I'd be like, yeah, okay. Yeah. Cool. And that's just as good as anything else. Of course. Of course. And like you mentioned, like the inside man feeling about it. Like um I just I just really like uh the Steve McQueen Faye Dunaway chemistry in that and like the ninety nine film. I guess I like the chemistry, but it is borderline pornographic. Yes, it's more... It, it is. Which, again, so, whatever, but, like... I... This is... They've been a lot. <laughs> yeah, this, this is why the one thing I don't like, and it changes everything... Okay. Um, and, for me, is he... Like, at the end of the 99 version, he outsmarts her, and, like, on the plane, and she's... Like, he gets away with it. Right. But he doesn't get away with it because it's... She, he like comes back to her. All it would take for her is to make a phone call, and That's he's it. arrested. Of course, no matter what, like he's going to jail for a long time. Um, even if it's like club fed, he's going to a, a facility. Sure. Steve McQueen flat out wins. He at just the end. wins. He just wins, and yep. then he puts the ball in her court. Like, listen, here, I'm, 
if you want to come find me, come find me. Right. Like, I'll be glad to, let's keep this going. I think you're great. I want to see where this goes, yeah. but you're not going to catch me. Yeah. Like, let's make that clear. I'm exactly. gone. I'm right. gone. But then now the ball's in your court. He flat out wins. That makes every mo When the bad guy, even though he's a good guy, right. when the bad guy wins, no. he flat out... He's a, he's a criminal in this movie. The plan was flawless. Yeah. The plan was flawless. You know? So, like, whatever. Like, you can try Go ahead. No, that's right. I'm gonna play it. Yeah. yeah. And guess what? I won. You think you figured it out? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's I think is so much better. Hey, Pre. Hey, Pre. Hey. Oh, nice. Oh, I didn't know you. Ooh. That's why you called, huh? I just realized. No, like, tw about for you. Twenty seconds ago, you called. Um, would you say that the Thomas Crown Affair from 1999 is, is that was that almost a porno? Did I see that? Yeah, it was the one with Pierce Brosnan, and he's on the boat, and he crashes the boat. Oh, and yeah. He's banging that lady, and he. There was a lot of sex. I there think is there a was lot some, of sex. like, it was... full frontal as well. Oh, there yes. was a lot of full frontal. That was real frontal. <laughs> wow. There's a full lot frontal. of fr full everything. Yeah. It was a sexy yeah. movie. Oh, right, we're going to wrap this one up soon, and we'll move up for our yeah, no second worries. podcast. But, um. Yeah, no. Our you're... second podcast? Yeah, we got to do the getaway next. Oh, wow. We haven't recorded in a while. Um, <clears throat> but, no, I 100% agree with you that. Um, yeah, Steve McQueen, I, I do prefer the ending. Yeah. 68, like, he just wins. He wins. And it's right. just like, and he puts the ball in her court, and he's like, hey, you're, I still got the money. Like, she sheds a bit of a tear. She sheds a bit like, of a tear. She's like, oh, God, am I going to, and you don't know what she's going to do. Is right. she going to go get him? Like, I like to think she is, but I don't know if she is. We'll see. Yeah, you, know, you don't like, know. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I, I like to think that, too. And it's much more ambiguous. I think it's so much of a better ending. Yeah. It's kind of like... Hey, if you really want to be with me without the heist, come get me then. Yeah. But you're not going to, that's no, no longer on the table. Right. Well, like the 99 thing is just, it's, yeah, I'm, I'm with you, it's just a bit like cheesy. It's the mega, ha mega happy ending. Yeah, yeah, too happy. That he's know? on the plane with her, like. Uh, too happy. And, like, and of course, and by the way, pre-9-11, yeah. he, could, he could be on that plane. Oh, of course. Post-9-11, he, he's showing all kinds of ID to get on there. Of and, course. Like, but also, like, I think that um, it undermines her to an extent. Like, yeah, um, makes her a, a slightly like in the beginning. I think she's a much stronger. Character. I think she's stronger than uh, Faye in some points. Yeah, early. But then in the in the end of she's she she falls so hard yeah. that she's ineffective at her job. Yes, going forward versus Faye Dunaway, he's still kind still of still pretty good at her job. Yeah. And it's, that, listen, she's not going to catch him, and she doesn't catch no, him. No, no. You're not going to catch him. But is she in love with him? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, no, she is. I don't know. Maybe it's just part of the game. I don't know. That's what makes it so good. But that, that that's the thing. Like, they're still on somewhat equal footing. Yeah. By the end. And, like, of course, he wins. Like, yeah. He just, because he was always going to win. But, um, the Pierce Brosnan thing, she isn't even capable of doing her job anymore mm -hmm. because of how smitten she is with this guy. Um, and it, and it shows, like, in multiple scenes, like, where the point, the point where Dennis Leary's like, yo, are you still with us? Like, yeah. where, where are you here? And, um, look, I can believe that could happen with either of these characters, Steve McQueen or Pierce Brosnan. Yeah. But, like, yeah, Rene Russo is fully smitten, and, um, Faye Dunaway just continues to have that, uh, a little bit of fight. Yeah, yeah. yeah. A little I, bit. It's really... They're both. They're like, both. like I said, they're both, they're both good. really good. So do you think? Fun. So you think the remake should exist? Oh, absolutely. And um, I think there's a, definitely a place for it. I think that it's uh, it's modernized and it's different, right? Like yeah, like I think that having that art angle in Pierce Brosnan being like, there's like a depth that's added to his motivation that is um, kind of fun to see, and it works well with Pierce Brosnan. It is it better? I don't know, but like it's different. Yeah, it's different. Also, the 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 price of the art makes it so yeah. much more interesting. Like the the price you're, you're not getting that much money from is. a bank. Yeah, you're yeah. not. Like if you if you and I decided to, although this movie made me want to rob a bank. Yeah, I'm not well, gonna lie to you. But both but the he, movies we watched. Yes, yeah, well, we'll talk about that later. Yeah. <laughs> but the um, the the other one, like if even if you robbed it today, like you're not getting that much money. Yeah, like, there's not even close. So like of the time, it makes sense. Right. Like okay, on a specific day, if you planned it out, like that much money is going to be right. there. That makes sense. But like this one, it makes more sense of like the art. 
mm -hmm. you know, of, of the modern because it's more worth the juice is more worth the squeeze. Absolutely. No, I think, um, yeah, I just, I just, uh, I think it should exist though. I, for sure. I, I like the imagery. Um, even again, as, as silly as it is. And like you said, you could like shut it down immediately. I like that little last heist in the fact that like, he wins in the sense that, like, it was here the whole time. Yeah, it was there the whole time. What do you want? What do you got? Press what? charges? I never really stole it. It was fun. Then I donated my own. Yeah. Come on. Exactly. Um, it was fun. Yeah, it was fun. And also, like, the relationship. I think their relationship was much more realistic. I don't know. It's yeah. much more. And also, yeah. they're the same age. Like, yeah. But they were age appropriate. No, I, I, I think that um, just the charm of Pierce Brosnan, and I guess. In this case, like this whole like sexy vibe of like Rene Russo with Pierce Brosnan, I think it worked really well. I thought it did um, too. I wouldn't mind like if someone's like, "Hey, you gotta you gotta pick one." It's like I don't care. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't <laughs> pick pick whoever one. I think I'd still go the Stephen Green yeah. one because I think it's true. Yeah. I think the bank heist in that is so cool. It's almost uh, like, oh, you might just model every bank heist after this movie. Yeah, and I I do prefer that sense of like the care and carefulness grounded in realism. Yeah. Versus like the ninety nine film is completely ridiculous. Yeah. Um it is could it's, it happen? I don't know. Titanium briefcase and, no. uh, like I'm the, go the helicopter coming like it's, it, it's a bit much. It's a bit much. That that's the thing about ninety nine. It's a bit much but like that's cool. That's yeah, the nineties. Like yeah it's the like 90s, going, it's the nineties. This is the max. Yeah. <laughs> this is this is three years <laughs> after solo. Yeah. <laughs> solo. You've been twisted. You've been twisted. You've been erased. Um, uh, they, they, uh, they, yeah, it's it's a bit much, but okay, it, it's a movie. I don't know. It can be a bit much. But yeah, I, yeah, that does go back to like kind of originally what we were saying. Sixty eight feels like yeah, I can see C. McQueen doing this. Yeah, I can see, and also Faye Dunaway's outfits alone. I'm like, yeah, yeah, oh, she's great. She's yeah, great. she the style of that movie is great, um, phenomenal. Even even just uh, Steve McQueen's suits are pretty cool. Yeah, no, and that's, that's the thing about McQueen. Uh, but I will give 99, obviously, the nod in, like, the action department. Like, I think, yeah, I think adding that. some of this cool action. The sleek style. This yeah, style. yeah. Especially, like, you know, he's in his, double, like you mentioned, his 007 heyday. And it's just another example, uh, chance to see Pierce Brosnan being kind of, like, suave, debonair, yeah. and, like, you know. They're both like, too cool for school, but they are too cool for school. You yes. Know, like, so. Yeah. yeah. But like you mentioned, that every man McQueen thing uh, wins the day. Mm -hmm. But the remake, certainly, um, I got no problem with it existing. And I think mm -mm. for a lot of people, it's probably how they know the Thomas Crown Affair. And uh, I'm okay with that. It's not, yeah. it's not a bad entry. I don't think so either. Mm -hmm. And I bet, yeah, there's a whole generation that don't know that's a remake. Yeah, but 100%. That's fine. And I think it's it's okay. This is one of the few times where I'm like, eh, okay. You yeah, know, like, like you said, a push. I think this one's more of a push. This is like as close to a push as we had. Um, with obviously the sl slight edge to the original, but like, eh. Yeah. Also, I just like the ending to the original. Like, yeah, I, I think I'm right. all for. I'm more for the depressing ending, more ambiguous depressing ending than I am for the mega happy ending. Like, I don't. That was I don't better. need the billionaire to be happy. That was <laughs> better. And um, another like positive, like obviously we talked about the sex scenes in both, but like the chess scene is better than yeah. what they were doing. It's much and more interesting. Yeah. Like who's who's yeah. who's having sex play in, in the middle of a chess game like that? Like. That to, you're doing. You're, to to you're make sex. chess. A symbol for sex. Sexy, exactly. Yeah. It's like, well, that. I haven't seen moves like that since Bobby Fischer. <laughs> that was a nice touch, you yeah. know? It was like 99's going to hit you over the head. It's like, we're not playing chess. We're just, we're, uh, you know? Yeah, it's crazy. We play, play fucking chess. Um, <laughs> yeah. Straight up. No, All right, great, so great. we did it. So yeah, that that, uh, to keep the, to close out uh, September Steve. Yep, uh, Steve all, September. So all this is going to be released in October, but we yeah. watched it in September. So yeah, it counts. Shut up. It counts. Uh, we're going to do uh, the Getaway nice. with Steve McQueen in the nineteen seventy two. I think. Uh, I think you're right. But, and then yeah. I think, and then the Getaway with Alec Baldwin and Kim Basinger. Right. In. Ninety six, seven, something like that. I don't know. Something like that. But yeah. So, the Getaway with uh, Steve McQueen, The Getaway with Alec Baldwin. Yes. So check us out, uh, Retroverse Remake on Instagram, on YouTube, at Retroverse Remake on Instagram, on YouTube. Like, subscribe, blah, blah, blah. You can find me, Dan Farley, at Dan Farley 18 on Instagram, at JerseyDan18 on uh, X. 
Yes. Um, and then Reggie. Oh, yeah, you can find me Reggie Parker at RP Comedy on Instagram and X. Um, yeah, follow the show on Spotify, YouTube. Like, subscribe, comment. Uh, we always love the comments, and if you have any ideas for movies or something you want to hear us talk about, there's a pretty good chance we'll do it. Yeah, you know? that's, so, I don't care. You know, what whatever. else are we doing? Exactly. Hell, I'm just going to interrupt my bank heist schedule. Oh, man. So many banks to rob. Yeah, it's a little yeah. tough. <laughs> but yeah, that All was right. fun as hell. Yeah, uh, next good movie's the, Next movie's The Getaway. The Getaway. See you guys later. Peace, Retro. Hey. That was dope. That was dope. That was dope.